So today I want to talk about the zone diet, which you created, um, and kind of where it's evolved to at this point in time. So going back to where it began, how did you come up with the zone diet and the macronutrient balance um, that people know today? Well, the zone diet is was developed and patented to reduce insulin resistance. And so um, the aspects of developing the zone diet came from saying, how does our diet affect our metabolism? And what, we have three components in our diet. We have you know, protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Now, of those three, in terms of the zone diet, and because it's a calorie-restricted diet, what's your number one thing you have to do in a calorie-restricted diet? Never be hungry. Say, yes, that's right. If I was never hungry, then I'd not consume excess calories. You got it. Now, people say, well, I, it sounds so flaky. Yet today, what's the number one topic? Wagovi, injectable weight loss drugs. How do they work? They work by basically putting, injecting hormones into your body that go to the brain, you hope they go to the brain, uh, to say, stop eating. They say, what a remarkable aspect of biotechnology. These people are brilliant. Well, it turns out that evolution was way ahead of them by about 200 million years. Now, this is why protein is the number one component for the zone diet, if hunger control is a key component. We need some protein because protein interacts with receptors in the gut that send signals to the brain to stop eating. Well, say, well, that's easy. That's basically injecting a drug every week. Say, but how much protein? Well, that's what we talk about a zone. There's a certain amount. The amount of protein you need to stop hunger is about 30 grams. Now, what's 30 grams of protein? About the amount of protein you can put on the palm of your hand. It's not very much. But any less than 30 grams of protein will not be sufficient to send satiety hormonal signals from the gut to the brain to say, stop eating. Say, well, in that case, I'll eat a 72 ounce porterhouse steak at every meal. Not so quick. Because if you have excess protein at a meal, you now turn on other factors in your metabolism that basically increase satiety by increasing insulin resistance. So a good rule of thumb, start with protein. How much? 30 grams of protein. Not more, but not less every time you eat. Oh, but I don't have protein for breakfast. I have a cup of coffee. Hello? Anybody home? No, that's not 30 grams of protein. So it's each meal. Now, if you want to take a shot of Ogovi, say, I can eat what I want to because it's going to stop hunger. But it's going to stop hunger, so you're not getting enough protein to diet, so you start losing lean body mass. What's lean body mass? It's everything that's not fat. It guides the weight of the liver, the brain, the kidney, uh, the heart. Say, well, I don't want to lose those things. No. But if you take Wilgovi, the data is quite clear. 40% of the weight loss in these weight loss and injectable drugs is due to a loss of lean body mass. Well, that doesn't sound very healthy. Say, you're right. It's not. Now, if you get the 30 grams of protein at each meal, uh, what else do you need? Well, we have two other nutrients in the diet. One is basically carbohydrates. Well, how much? The answer is not much. Maybe about 40 grams. So, What's the best way to get carbohydrates that don't exceed 40 grams at a meal? Your grandmother told you, you eat your vegetables, your non-starchy vegetables. So it's very hard to overconsume vegetables, but vegetables are also rich in fiber. Now, why is that important? Because the fiber will get down to the lower part of our intestine, the colon, where it's now basically metabolized by the microbes to release what are called short chain fatty acids. And they amplify the satiety signals from the protein. So the protein will generate the satiety signals and the fiber with that meal in the non starchy vegetables will now generate basically uh, an amplifying factor that maintains the satiety for a long period of time. How long? About five hours. Now, what about fat? you add a dash. What's a dash? A small amount, but amount of basically 
heart healthy monounsaturated fat. That could be a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. It could be basically of, you know, uh, 14 almonds. It could be two tablespoons of guacamole. All great choices. And basically, voila, it's done. You've now orchestrated 200 million years of evolution to stop hunger for the next five hours. And what do you do at next meal? You repeat. And so you get into, uh, thanks, I'm taking this as a drug, a drug to stop hunger and reduce insulin resistance. Now, why do I want to do that? Because it's insulin resistance that disrupts our metabolism. And a disrupted metabolism is the quickest way to gain weight, to basically lose mental focus, and three, develop chronic disease. So how long do you want to follow this type of program? For a lifetime. There are only three programs that I know of that you can follow for a lifetime of calorie restriction. One is gastric bypass surgery. Okay, it's a little brutal, <laughs> but it works. Two, get injections, weekly injections of Ogovi the rest of your life. Because the data is quite clear. The day you stop taking Ogovi, the weight comes right back. Third, follow the zone diet. The choice is yours. Now, this makes so much sense, Dr. Sears. One thing I do want to have you clarify, though, is you've had some early adapters that have been with you for the past 30 years. So now you're recommending 30 grams of protein before um, used to be the block method, where it's like 21 grams of protein at a meal for females and 28 for males. So um, how has this evolved from kind of where you first started with the diet? Well, uh, they're basically they are uh, uh, very compatible. I remember I talked about 30 grams of protein is what you need to stop hunger. That's different than the amount of protein you need to basically maintain your lean body mass. The amount of protein you need to stop hunger is invariant, whether male or female, doesn't matter. The amount of protein you need to maintain your lean body mass depends on one, your weight, your percent body fat, your physical activity. That's a different number. Now, for uh, Olympic athletes, uh, and you know, you're active, I'm active, but neither one of us is an Olympic athlete, they'll need more than probably 30 grams of protein at a meal. Most of us are not Olympic athletes. So if I was, a, let's say, an average female who was not very active, I would need about maybe 22 to 25 grams of protein at each meal, or 75 grams total, to basically maintain my lean body mass. Remember, that's when you take Wogovi, that's what you lose. I mean, you're losing uh, not only muscle mass, you're losing brain mass, heart mass, liver mass, kidney mass, things you don't want to lose. Now, if you're a, a male, then 30 grams of protein will probably be sufficient. So again, we had to say the protein needs one to basically maintain lean body mass is one, one bucket. The other bucket is basically how much I need to maintain satiety. So focus on the satiety first. And because if you don't have satiety, calorie restriction will be impossible to maintain. And why is it, it's not that we're saying we're trying to starve to death. We're saying it's basically calorie restriction, not malnutrition, not hunger, not fatigue, but calorie restriction that activates the master switch in every one of our 37 trillion cells. It's called AMPK that basically reprograms our metabolism. And we're doing that five to three times a day. And the better you get at it, the better your metabolism is, and the longer and better you live. So this 30 grams of protein, Dr. Sears, is more of a guideline. This is still going to be individualized to you pending your level of satiation. I, I think that you probably say, I want to get 30 grams of protein. If I get a little more than my lean body mass needs, I can live with that. But getting any less than 30 grams of protein a meal, you're going to be okay. hungry. That makes sense. And then where do snacks fit in? Well, if you're not hungry, you That's don't need true. a snack. That's true. <laughs> but you, it's, can you but, so, so if you need a snack, admit your, admit your last meal was a loser. <laughs> All right. Noted. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, I think everything you've said today makes a lot of sense. And, and even just the evolution of the zone diet, where it just used to be the diet. And now you're talking about metabolic engineering, where you're adding on the omegas and the poly. So uh, you can see really how you've evolved, but still stayed somewhat consistent to your messaging that you had over 30 years ago. So 
Well, we evolve because science evolves. Our knowledge of metabolism is much greater today than it was 30 years ago. Now, if you basically ag ignore that and say, say you're living in a, a fool's paradise, we, you always keep evolving, but we find even with the evolving of the metabolism, especially the metabolism of satiety, it's, you're right on target with the, uh, the zone guidelines as they were 35 years ago. That hasn't changed. But the, basically the, uh, the nuances are vastly greater. Really, healthcare begins with what we put in our mouth. Uh, you know, hear that in and out, you know, I'm a biohacker, I'm a, a, a nutritional guru saying, hey, show me the data, show me some science. The science says, yes, that our metabolism, our diet to reprogram our metabolism can be far stronger than any drug. It doesn't say drugs are bad, but if you're using a drug and not reprogramming your metabolism at the same time, you're playing the game with one hand and one leg tied behind your back. That's true of basically treating a disease state. It's also true of going through life. I'm, you're working too hard. Basically work with your metabolism. Don't work against it. Absolutely. And what I love as a dietitian is you're really very moderate in what you recommend. Um, you're not over on protein. You're not too high on fat. You know, you're right in the middle, which I think everybody can agree with. And the types of foods you're promoting, you know, are, are very in line. I, I, think, I, think, I think they call that a zone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>